I'm going to give the mic to Ferek. Just for the record, you probably have the most amazing professional picture I've ever seen. So. Uh, well, thanks for the invitation for the meetup. My name is Frederick. I work as marketing data scientist at Bandai Namco Mobile in Barcelona. Just saying a few words about marketing data science. My job is to help the marketing team acquire more players for our games and keeping this activity profitable. One important thing of this job is to have the data with very good quality and to connect data from different sources. You can follow the cats on TikTok. I have a Twitter account, but I'm not very active. So if you want to reach out, send me an email or add me on LinkedIn. I want to show you is uh, how are we using DBT in our marketing pipeline and how all is connected in AWS. That will be the purpose of the talk. We'll start with some motivation, like why are we building a marketing pipeline to explain why we decided to go fully serverless to use DBT. Then I'll show you a bit more technical details on how the marketing pipeline is built and why we like this solution. So the first point is like, we want to reduce the time and effort it takes to integrate data from various partners. We in the marketing team or any marketing company faces the challenge of having various sources of data from mobile mesh partners that aggregate different performance marketing data from advertising networks to creative data, maybe even other sources of data, which could be like predictions or other models, targets, or even like very specific uh, data from operating data from iOS. So we want to reduce the time it takes to integrate that data. Bullet point is that we also want to have a single point of truth for the KPIs and also that we want to do transformation. Yes, uh, of course, we want to improve the quality of data. This is super important because basically the data is used for reporting, which is mostly like monitoring return on investment and also for modeling. And then we also want to be able to combine all these tables or models uh, with it. At Bandai Namco Mobile, we have the philosophy of having small performance teams that focus on delivering value to the business. The data people must spend their time working on the tasks that we have uh, rather on data infrastructure, we want to be productive. Basically, like this translates into how to spend the least amount of time managing data infrastructure and also SQL. So basically this translates into that we don't want to manage big data clusters. We don't want to manage workflow schedulers. And the final point is the maybe less cost when we talk about managing data infrastructure, but it's also very important because usually in this part, we spend a lot of time. We don't want to have SQL files repositories. At this point is what we want to avoid and what is basically guiding all the decisions we took. So we are collecting data as part of files on S3. And then we have like some row tables. That means that they have not been transformed with some partition. More or less, it's about 150 million rows per day, but there is much more data coming in the future. And we are rebuilding the analytics tables or reporting tables from scratch every day. But also, we have some other tables. So we have catalogs that help us clean and group data, for example, countries catalog or advertising network. And this is very important, maintaining these catalogs. On the AWS services side, we are using Glue heavily for our pipeline. AWS Glue is a managed Spark cluster. You can run either Python scripts or Spark SQL. So we have some Python scripts that download Spark files from APIs. So these are not any fancy transformations or giants or anything. All the catalogs are maintained with the AWS Glue data catalog. And then from that point, once the data is on the uh, AWS Glue data catalog, we can use a team. So basically, we generate analytics tables using DBT, and that is defined in a AWS Glue job using AWS Batch with a custom Docker container image as the setup for a DBT. Last step after we have the raw data to generate all the analytics tables. We are using the community plugin for DBT with Athena. Uh, so basically all the, all the transformations. So I wanted to show you just selected lines of code. What's important on the Docker container part, necessary dependencies, basically like AWS, Python, and we are using Poetry. With that container, we have all the setup for DBT. Then we have two scripts. One script that deploys the container to the Amazon ECS. And then we have another script that is running DBT. If you are familiar with execute the models by, or you run everything with the DBT run command, and we pass there the environment. Because we are using Athena, the plugin doesn't erase the data from S3. So at the beginning of our script, we erase the, the tables, and then we run DBT. And then from the AWS batch side, it's just calling that run script with the environment. It's quite simple, 
there is nothing like complicated. So this is how the workflow looks like. The WF Glue workflow where you can define the workflow itself. Start, it starts with the trigger based on the schedule. It runs some Python scripts to get some additional uh, data to S3. Then it updates the table definition, AWS Glue crawler. It raises some de data and then it does all those basic transformations that I told you with Spark SQL. And then the last step is DBT with Athena. It's actually very nice because when we want to add some model or change some model, by model I mean like a tool from our analytics, we just change the DBT project and that's it. We don't need to touch the workflow, which is nice. Why we went for this solution? So we don't need to worry about the infrastructure. Like we have not really touched or configured any like EMR clusters or Anything is just like a managed service for both the workflow and the big data cluster. That's very nice. The glue jobs are very good. You can very easily like call any Python script or a Spark SQL. Glue crawlers create the schemas from scratch. And finally, something very nice is that we build the, the glue workflow programmatically in Python using the Amazon Boto 3 library. That's very good because we can easily develop it, test it, and deploy it to the development and production environment. We don't need to use the glue workflow user interface to create the workflow. From the DBT side, why we like this solution? First, like we found that building the analytics tables and catalog using DBT is much more productive than manually adding SQL into the pipeline. Line. That means like whenever we would not be using DBT, we would need to have all these like drop statements, create tables, insert incremental updates to the tables. And that turns very messy when you have many tables. So it's very productive to just add some transformation using SQL. Everybody likes SQL, so it's very nice. And that way it's very productive, right? It allows us to organize analytics tables. It helps us define the catalog, check test for errors, and control the dependencies between tables. It was simple to integrate DBT, but it didn't took that much effort to add it into our pipeline, even though we are using some other set of tools, right? We want to use Athena, and DBT supports Athena with the community library. And this provides a very effective and cheap way to process and query data. Also, we use Tableau for dashboards. And Tableau has a very nice feature that is called the Tableau Extracts. And those are amazing because what they do is that you can query a whole table, say maybe 20 million rows, which fits in our definition. Tableau will load it into memory, and then you can make the dashboards that work to work with that extract, which means that Tableau will not query Athena interactively. So we think of our analytics and reporting tables. The pipeline has daily cost 13 GPUs. It's about like $5.7. And then there's some small, very small costs from Athena and S3. So it's quite cost effective, I would say. And then like as conclusion, well, what we learned how to set up stuff on AWS, anti-services, and also to, to add DBT, developing in the pipeline is very simple. And I can really say that we do save a lot of time and effort that it takes to maintain infrastructure and SQL files. Thank you, Frederick. That was really interesting and informative, even though I kind of knew it already. <laughs> I actually have a quick question because I don't see any other question at the moment, but in terms of volume of data and, and potentially scaling up, how would that work with the current setup? Right. So as long as we can use Athena to do the transformations, I think we won't face any like scalability issues. And then anyway, so let's say we face it and let's say Athena is not enough and we need to use something else. I would say maybe the transition wouldn't be hard because, well, we would probably need to change some functions that to Athena and check that I will need to adapt that uh, part of DBT. But then, as far as I know, like DBT would help a lot also in that transition because the models would be already organized and so on. So it will be maybe mostly localizing SQL today. Very nice. Thank you.